your goodness in me nourish my soul all the more till your love overflows into my home for I'm happy in the fountain hello and welcome again to marriage in the fountain and this being our last session together um, and as we close off, we're actually coming very much back into every tier of the fountain again because Lizette and I are going to speak about uh, healthy boundaries in our relationships as a, as a spouse. So speaking about the fountain then, we're going to speak about every single one of those tiers because every aspect of that influences our relationship. Uh, there's one that I actually want to add in to the bottom. Because uh, Ephesians doesn't speak anything about it, but in our day and time, it's not just God, spouse, children, work, ministry, or voluntary work that I do. Another big aspect for many couples is recreation. Mm. Uh, how much time and how much money, uh, attention do I give to sport in particular, mm. or those kind of things. Um, so let's start then with children. <laughs> right. uh, you, you've over the years spoken a lot about seasons in our walk with children mm. and how that changes the priorities in our home yeah. yeah speak a bit about that yeah so we just said um, yeah when our kids are, are smaller they obviously well in marriage in general mm -hmm. <laughs> when kids come along there's a certain um, so my spouse should be number one um, but obviously when there's babies in the house, that's a bit difficult because they really do need a lot more attention than my spouse does. And it's a and shock that, on the system. And it's a shock on the system. Yeah. And then especially as they're getting a little bit older as well, and they still can't, they can't do everything with you yet, or they can't go in everywhere. Um, and they don't understand as much. Um, so it's just that realizing that, yeah, you know, when they're small, um, things look a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and we had a particular instance where, um, so Garth would come to early morning prayer meetings and there's a, I just want to say there's a phase where kids don't really know when you're at home, when you're not at home and, and that's all, that's all good. Yeah. Um, but he would, have, he would come to early morning prayer meetings, which was between six and seven. And then sometimes at night it would be, um, a cell group or a worship practice. Yeah. There was some, I mean, some evenings it could be. Yeah, you know, could get quite busy. Um, and then the one day our daughter mentioned, um, and Garth was actually at home that afternoon. So he had a morning prayer meeting. So when they woke up, which was always quite early, um, he was already gone. Um, he'd been home that afternoon. I still remember we were at the beach that afternoon. Yes, had and a then lovely family time. Lovely family time. He came back to church. And um, when I put them to bed at eight, um, she said, sure, it's really sad that we didn't see dad today. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> and she said, well, he wasn't here when we woke up and he's not here now when he, when we're going to bed. So he wasn't here. And I just said, no, but we were at the beach this afternoon. She was about three and a half, four at the time. And I said, but we were at the beach the whole afternoon. Just like, oh, oh yes, was that today? And when he got home, we actually just had a bit of a discussion where we said, um, because this is a lie that could creep in, that he isn't yes. here in the mornings, he isn't here in the evenings, he's, he's hardly ever here. Um, so that was a discussion we then had to have and say, okay, on the days, he either needs to be there in the morning when they wake up or at night when they go to bed. Yeah. He can't do a, a morning and an evening activity. Yes. <laughs> They're just too small and they don't, they don't understand. Now they're much older. Now it doesn't have that big of an impact. They, yes. they understand what's going on and they realize that there's, there's other days when that's not the case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that specifically was something that needed to, to change for a season. Yeah. Um, and, and can I just throw in, I, it, it was a difficult change for me. Yes. You know, I didn't want to give up the particular schedule. It worked for me. It worked for the ministry, for the people that I prayed And just to minister, say, it's, it's difficult to tell your husband, you can't go to a prayer hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because it feels like the right thing to do. You cannot go and speak to yeah. God with other people. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but that it, was... Yeah. It was for a season, as you say, and I yeah. think that's important, to be able to say, I'm willing to make changes 
for the household, yeah. for our relationship, for our relationship with our kids. It speaks into another thing, though, because um, we early on had to um, make a distinction between what is work and what is voluntary work, yeah. or voluntary. can I say ministry, yeah. voluntary work. And um, we had to get it very clear. Mm. So just to say, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean everything I do in the church is part of my work. Uh, we had to make the distinction. So maybe it will make it easier for you as well as a Christian who volunteers certain of your time mm. um, at the church or in whatever other ministry capacity. We also have to make that distinction. Mm. So um, in this particular instance, it was part of the conversation because yeah. it is it is not part of my work to have to be at every prayer meeting. Yeah. I volunteer myself like everybody else yeah. for a prayer meeting or for some other things as well. And very often in our conversation, that had to come up to say, all right, but you're being paid for these things mm. and you're volunteering for those things. Yeah. So, so when we have take... to make a shift, uh, you cannot give everything the same amount of weight. Mm. So just as a volunteer in ministry as well. Um, part of these conversations, remember what Rob and I said right at the beginning. Don't mix it up by saying, um, seek first the kingdom of God is volunteering myself mm. for church things or for whatever else. Um, seek first the kingdom of God is being in an intimate relationship with God, the king. Uh, that is what that scripture means. Yeah. Um, so I have to have my priorities. And I straight. just think, yeah, it was a sermon series also that Rob which was specifically about the fountain yes. that we went through quite early on in our marriage. He was preaching through that. Um, and the guideline was just asking how each, each thing we take on, how does that affect my relationship with God, my relationship with my kids, mm. oh, my spouse first, and then with my kids. And once again, that could change. That's yeah. not a forever decision that you're making. It can just be a, a season because... A lot of stuff changed as well when I wasn't working full time anymore. Yes. And I went to a half a half day position. Yeah. Um, there was a time when you had to drop the kids at school and pick them up, and then all of a sudden that could change, and your work hours look different, or your you could schedule your time differently yes. and take on more. Yeah. Yeah. More Without things during the morning hours. The yes. Yeah. 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 And. Over the years, we made some big decisions regarding Lizette's work in particular as well because it impacted our income tremendously. Mm. Um, but every one of those decisions was made with a piece that, yes, we're here in God, mm. and yes, this is good for our home. Yeah. We're willing to give up that much in order to gain yeah. this priority yeah. that we feel is good for the home. Yeah. Um, now, during lock time, lockdown time, uh, Normally, I can come into work, and most of my office hours are spent uh, sitting in an office here or ministering in different places mm. with people outside of the home. Uh, we had life groups at our home uh, early yeah. on as yeah. well in our marriage, uh, but at this particular time, not. Yeah. And then suddenly lockdown came. And as many of us, uh, we started changing the way we worked. And for a period of time, and had I had to figure. To out new stuff to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And I had to do it from home yeah. with kids being at home, with spouse being at home, with mom and law being at home. Yeah. And there were some really frustrating times. Yeah. I, I was really frustrated. The kids. <laughs> 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 but that's a very real challenge for many yeah. couples at the moment. And it will probably be going forward yeah. is um, recognizing that just because I'm at home, doesn't mean I'm there. Yeah. Um, when I'm sitting behind a screen, the kids do not see that my attention is actually towards them. Mm. My spouse doesn't feel that my attention is towards her. Just because I'm sitting in that place doesn't mean I'm there. I'm and in communication it, yeah. with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, and just because it's at home, you you've got more time to sit behind the screen because I just quickly want to finish this or yes. just quickly and it. And yeah, as with most things on screen, um, you think it's going to be 10 minutes and then it's an hour. And once again, I think to a certain degree, spouses can understand a bit more. Um, but yeah, it was it was tough on the kids. Yes. <laughs> and then on the spouse having to try and keep the kids away from the one doing the <laughs> yeah. doing the work or the recording or whatever that, yeah, they couldn't understand that you were 
at home, but not at home, not available. Yes, yeah. And, and I know it's a very real challenge for, for many people at the moment, but just the encouragement with that is, um, uh, Rob, early on when I started working at the church, spoke to me about three phases in the day. Uh, and because the kind of work that we do is always quite flexible, and for many people it is flexible as well, um, things have changed in that perspective. I think it's a very simple but a very helpful tool to remember. You cannot work in all three phases of the day, morning, afternoon, and evening. One of those actually has to be open. Otherwise, the family sacrifices too much. Mm. Um, and I, it's, we once heard a guy speaking, and he said it so well that he, he says uh, if somebody would phone him, he would just say, no, I already have an appointment at that time. Knowing well in his mind, it's an appointment with my wife. It's an appointment with my he would kids. would schedule in time uh, with, yeah. yeah. He would actually write it in his diary in specific time slots. Yeah, and whoever is making the demand doesn't have to know it is with my wife. And even if they do, that's also fine. Yeah. Uh, but it is an appointment that I must honor with you as much as with somebody that I'm going to do yes. deliverance with. Or yeah. somebody you are as important, more important, you're a primary relationship yeah. in my life. Um, so just to have those boundaries in place to recognize when do I close the screen because I've had it now open since morning through the afternoon and it's evening now. I shouldn't be opening it anymore. Mm. Uh, I shouldn't be stuck in my office anymore. Mm. I should devote time to the family yeah. as well. Yeah, mm. and then we just had the same thing with recreation activities and now especially with the kids being a bit bigger, sometimes they can cycle along or yes, go. Yes, it's together. Yeah, we also just said we have to, it's good to do exercise and it's, it's, it's good to take part in that, but also just to realize, yeah, if you've been at work, work for most of the day, um, yeah, how does it impact your spouse and your child? Yes, when you, when if you I do spend that? another hour or two on the road now, on the bicycle yeah. or in the gym. Um, so not to say don't exercise, but, <laughs> <laughs> Let it but just check, place. yes, yeah, just check how does it influence the, and I just think, like we've said before, discuss it. Because sometimes yes. it is, you know what, I can see you really need this and it actually does you good to go and cycle or whatever. Um, but yeah, if it becomes a bit too much to say, yeah, this day is maybe not a good day or, you yeah. know. But to actually be able to discuss it and, yeah. Yes, to come to an agreement together. Yeah. Because very easily it can take over. Mm. It's a good thing too much for a good thing is not yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, God, please give us wisdom with our mm. priorities. We've spoken about this over the past 14 sessions, and we need your spirit to give us wisdom, mm. to keep you in first place, to find our joy in you, uh, to find our identity centered in you, Jesus Christ. And may it overflow into our marriage. May my spouse be blessed because my relationship with you is overflowing with goodness. And may our children be greatly blessed because our marriage is filled with the love of God. May my workplace recognize that I'm walking in a relationship with you and that I've got a home that testifies of the goodness of God. And may the overflow of that into voluntary work in whichever way I do that uh, be filled with the goodness of God that flows through my home uh, into the community that I live in. We trust you for that, Jesus Christ. May our marriage truly be in the family.